Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live Signing. I'm Danny Valdez, and with us today is New York Times food columnist and home cooking authority, Mr. Cl Melissa Clark, excuse me, for the live signing of her new book, Kid in the Kitchen, 100 Recipes and Tips for Young Home Cooks. Whether you're new to cooking or you already rock that kitchen, these 100 recipes make it easy to cook what you like exactly how you like it. Melissa Clark, and I think her husband, Daniel, how are you today? Daniel, are you here? <laughs> We're great. Hi, Danny. So good hey. to be here. Um, we're great. We are excited to sign with everybody who's watching and, you know, answer some questions. Um, show off my new beautiful book, which comes out tomorrow. So Woo! anybody can pre-order it now. They're going to get a copy in the next couple of days. And um, I'm going to be signing lots of these book plates for people. Yes. So, so, we chat, so, we, so I have to multitask here, right? I have to sign and chat at the same time, but I can do that. Yeah, if, if if you would please and set the stage for us. We're in your house. Looks like in your kit in a corner of your kitchen at least. Yeah, we're in a corner of the kitchen. So um, you are in the nice, neat, clean corner of the kitchen. <laughs> okay. um, every, all the clutter is right behind you. You can't see it. This yeah. is a working kitchen. I do all of my recipe development and testing right here. Okay. So uh, you know, we we got pots and pans. We've got things, but this is the calm space. This is the nice. <laughs> You know, this is my, I'm going to have my tea, I'm going to sign some book plates, I'm going to chat with Danny and all of you, and uh, yeah. be chill. You love it. And I, I see some goodies. Talk to me about what I can't actually reach and get, unfortunately. I know, I feel bad. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, everybody. So um, these are sheet pan sugar cookies. I'm going to hold them close to the camera. Sorry, Danny, if I could send you one, I really would. Everybody <laughs> out there. Um, so this is a great recipe. This is, and obviously it's from Kid in the Kitchen, the cookbook. So instead of, when you make sugar cookie dough, instead of rolling it out and using cookie cutters to cut up individual shapes, which takes a long time, this yeah. is the hurry up version. You just press the dough into um, like a sheet pan, a baking pan, you bake it, and then when it comes out, you ice it, you can tint the icing pink or you can leave it white, put some sprinkles on it. They are so festive, kids love them. Oh. I'm gonna show you a picture in the book you can see what it looks like in the book and that is the recipe and they're super easy and another great thing this recipe it makes a lot of them so this is the yeah. perfect thing to make like when your kid is having a party and you're not going to make it your kid's going to make it by the way so this kid in the kitchen I heard that <laughs> your kid is cooking you are just uh i always like to say the parents sort of like the sous chef you let the kid be in charge because yeah. kids, kids can really if you give them a chance you know, especially this is written for kids eight to 14. And at that okay. point, they can be in charge. You know, you, yeah. can, you can give them some independence. They can do stuff. They can do stuff. Right? You've got four kids, you know, right? Kids can you, do stuff. Absolutely. If it, Like that's life or death at my house. Like I, my wife or myself, we can't not only make the food, but then do the dishes and take out the trash and, and, and. Like I told my wife, like, go sit down and do nothing. Like, that's your right. You, you made four kids. Go have a seat, please. I know, right? She's like, okay, I'm done. I, I've done the four kids. Now I'm done for the rest of my life. No. <laughs> yeah, now, it, is Daniel coming in, or is he going to be the mystery hand that hands you things throughout the throughout these episodes? We, he doesn't have to come in. I'm just, just as mysterious on camera. Hey, there he is. <laughs> so hey, we wrote this book together. Um, so um, it was a family affair. So I wrote it with Daniel. I did all the recipes. Daniel did... Most of the writing and though certainly all of the organizing, which I'm terrible at, so he was really good at that. I handed he, her a lot of things. He he, he did spreadsheets. <laughs> like he it's went on hand. Excel and made spreadsheets. I was like, oh God, this is so useful. Why? I yeah. really should. Um, and then my daughter, our daughter, Dahlia, um, she tested all the recipes. Well, not all of them. She tested a bunch of the recipes with us. So this cookbook was made by a family, by our family, for your family. And that way you know when you get it that the recipes work. Because yeah. we had kids in the kitchen doing the testing, and wow. uh, it, it was fun, right? Yeah, it was fun. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. And for the next hour, Melissa and her husband are going to be signing books and answering as many questions as possible. I don't know if Daniel will be signing or not, right? Just <laughs> Melissa. Yeah, yeah fair yeah. enough. And uh, for those who have just tuned in and have not yet purchased one of these great-looking cookbooks, you actually still have time to order an autographed copy and submit a question. To Melissa, we're about to go to questions now from those of you who have bought the books, but just click over to premiercollectibles.com forward slash kitchen to order your copy. So 
uh, Melissa and even Daniel, do you guys have favorites? Uh, no, maybe you can't choose just one or at least some that you really love that really stand out. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorites is um, it's a shrimp scampi skillet dinner. It's so cool. It's like, okay, who doesn't love shrimp scampi, right? Kids love shrimp, garlic, okay. buttery, put it on top of pasta, right? And so yeah. what I did was I took that recipe and turned it into a skillet meal. So you do it in one pot. So you don't have to like make a separate pot of pasta. It's all together in one pot. And it's garlicky, it's buttery, it's got tons of lemon and herbs on it. And if you have one of those kids who doesn't like fish or shrimp, like actually our kid does not like shrimp, we do it with chicken also. You can do it with chicken tenders, wow. same exact recipe, just with chicken tenders. And it, takes, and it just takes the whole thing, takes like 20 minutes or 25 minutes. It's super easy, weeknight friendly. So that would be one of my favorites. What about you, babe? What do you, I know you like the, what do you love? You love the pizzas. He's a pizza guy. I do love the pizzas. Yeah, that might be my favorite. So homemade yeah. pizza. That's a great group activity. Everybody gets to do something in that one. Daniel, are you a, are you a writer? You said you're a writer as well, or you just wrote yeah. in this book? I've been I write as well, and uh, so we're all um, here in the house writing away. You look like a New York writer to me. Like if somebody is like, I'm a writer from New York. Like I expect your photo to come across the screen <laughs> in a great way. In a fan, yeah. Like like you're you look credible. Like I'd hire you. Would you? I would. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, how about we dive oh, into? <laughs> yeah, thank you. How about we dive into these questions? A lot of people uh, have written in, and uh, are you ready? I we're ready, right? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, take a question from Tiffany from St. Louis, Missouri. What is your favorite memory in the kitchen? Oh, so <laughs> actually, I want to answer that too. But my favorite memory. So when I was a kid, I learned how to cook when I was a kid, and that's part of the reason that. Um, we wanted to write this book is because cooking with my parents was one of the most, like, it, it set me up for life. I mean, look at me, I'm a food writer. I would not be where I am if I did not learn how to cook for my parents yeah. at a young age. And one of my favorite memories is, um, so I have a giant sweet tooth. I love dessert. And my dad also was a baker. And he and I used to make these cookies together. They were the Viennese walnut crescents, they were called. And they're these little buttery, sugary cookies. And we would roll out the dough between our hands and make little crescents and bake them and then put powdered sugar all over them. And they were so delicious. So that's definitely wow. my earliest. What about you, babe? I, I learned to cook after I left home. So all my food memories are as an adult. Uh, we didn't, we, I didn't come from a cooking household. I married into one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. My cooking in my house growing up was macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I developed a uh, passion for my ancestors as well for hot pockets. So I'm quite envious of, uh, of the, a real food heritage. That's beautiful. Um, I've what never is, had a hot pocket. You've never I've had a hot pocket. pocket? You I don't need, it. you don't ever need one. <laughs> No, will you make me hot? Just then, to, yeah, I'm gonna find you a hot pocket. Just to, you know, be part of like this cultural moment, yep. right? <laughs> yes. Uh, what are some of your favorite quarantine dishes? I, do they do they differ if it's a quarantine dish or not? I guess I would say a quarantine dish is something that you make from the pantry. So you know, a lot of people stocked up on pantry staples at the beginning of the whole pandemic because we were worried that our, our supply chains were gonna be affected by the virus, which for the most part, they were very briefly, but not in a, a huge way that we all thought they were. I mean, I think sure. there's a lot of panic buying going on. So when I think of a quarantine meal, I think of something that you make from your pantry. You know, I mean, I bought a lot of beans. Everybody bought beans, we bought rice, we bought pasta. Sure. To me, it's something super simple that you make with pantry ingredients. Um, one of our favorites is we love rice and beans like a big old pot of whatever kind of beans with garlic and onions and you just let it simmer and maybe a little tomato, maybe a vegetarian chili kind of deal or just without the tomato, just in its own beany broth. And then you serve that over, you know, rice that has a ton of butter in it. And it's so, and then you put herbs over the whole thing and lots of lemon juice and it's so simple or lime juice. It's so mm. simple and so satisfying. It's meatless. It's good for you, and it's dirt cheap. So that is, to me, my favorite, you know, pandemic meal. Nice. Mark from Ontario asks, "What is your favorite spice?" Um, ooh, that's a good question. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is cumin. So I'm gonna have to go with that. I, I put cumin in pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, one of my old editors at the New York Times really doesn't like cumin, and he would always be like, "Really? 
Do you have any other spices that you like? Does it always have to be <laughs> cumin? But I love cumin. I love coriander. And then I love spice blends. Like garam masala is a fantastic spice blend. It's um, an Indian spice blend that can have many different kinds of spices in it. Um, good old curry powder. Um, the thing about spices, though, is you got to make sure to use them when they're fresh. So for everybody out there, if you don't remember the oh, last time you bought your spices, throw it out and buy a new one because it's probably not going to be good. That's such a great tip I'm using. I, I look at my spices and they might be circa like 1982, maybe yeah. 1882. I don't know. <laughs> so that is a, if you open the jar and you don't smell anything, that is a hint. So that it's time to replace your spices. That's, great. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, have you, um, I don't know if you qualify this or count this. Uh, you ever heard of tajin or tajin? Oh, wait. Um, oh, yes. The Mexican spice. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that. Oh my yeah. gosh. That on corn with lime juice. Oh, oh, oh. gosh. Yes. Amazing. Is that your favorite? Absolute all time favorite. I love that. That's such a good, and that one, I, I feel like that I've been seeing more and more, you know, it used to be one of those things where it was a little bit hard to get, but I've been seeing it at the supermarket. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, Stacy writes is what is your favorite dish to make and why? I love to, um, well, first of all, I love all cooking. I love to cook. Like, I just love the process of, I always say that to me, cooking dinner is like my daily equivalent of a weekend. It's like my time to chill. So it's like you that. could be a cutting board and some yeah. garlic to chop. And I'm just like, you know, and a glass of wine and you know, <laughs> yeah. some music. And we're just like, we're so happy. I'm just like, we're in a, it's like a chill space. Um, but that said, I love making soup. I really like to make a big pot of soup. Um, because you don't need a recipe for soup. So I'd love to do that because I like to, to be creative and, and yeah. play. Um, what else? I really like making cookies. I love making shortbread cookies. The, yeah. The cookies. yeah. Um, because I can also, same thing, I can be creative with the different, so the recipe in here, there are soup recipes in here, but there's also a recipe in here for a one bowl shortbread cookie with melted butter. It is so, your kid, even like your five or six year old could make this. Um, you yeah. can be helpful with the baking, but like just it's just mixing up the ingredients. And what's so fun about it is you can personalize it, put different spices in it. You can do it with almond, you can do it with vanilla, you could do it with like rose water if you want to get you know fancy um, cinnamon. And it's just it's a great place for kids to be creative because it's going to come out good no matter what they put in it. So yeah. I love it, and I recommend that for maybe as a first thing for cooking with your kids. Mm. Chris from Texas asks. Is there a dish you love to cook that your family doesn't necessarily like to eat? <laughs> would you like to answer that? That would be okra. Okra? Uh, I love okra. I love, love okra. okra. I, can't I do okra too. Every day. Okra, yeah. but this is how I like to make okra. I like, and I want to hear, uh, Danny, I want to hear how you like to make okra, but I like to take, I take my okra, I have it lengthwise, and then olive oil, salt, and I broil it super, super high heat, and it gets crispy. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love it. And so when I make myself okra, I like give Dahlia and Daniel, some, my daughter Dahlia and Daniel, something else to eat. I'm like, here, you guys have like chicken. I have, I'm having my okra. Just yeah. Just leave it alone. <laughs> I, I, I don't care how it's cooked, but butter, salt, and pepper is all I need with my okra. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Even just like steamed okra with butter, salt, and pepper, delicious. And I, I can say- there are no okra recipes in this cookbook, I'm sorry to say. Okay. Well, I can say the same for meat, though. Like, a lot of people are like, what's all the secret spice in, in, like, a hamburger? I'm like, man, salt and pepper. Just cook it right on the grill. I just yeah. love it. If you have good meat to start with, that's all you need. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, would you offer, provide a vegan cookbook, or do you already have one? You know, I I, am, I don't – I have never written a vegan cookbook. Um I'm not big on labels, you know, like I believe, you know, cooking vegan food is just good cooking without sure. using certain ingredients, focusing on vegetables. Right. Right. So a lot of what I do is that anyway, um, I wouldn't call it vegan um, just because I feel like I don't, I, you know, I do also eat meat and I mean, I eat a lot of, I mean, I eat more vegetables than meat, but I, meat is part of my diet. I'm, a, I, I'm an omnivorous eater. Um, and I think that I wouldn't want to offend vegans by authoring a vegan cookbook just because that's not how I identify. But that said, a lot of the food that I'm already making is vegan. Um, Daniel doesn't eat a lot of dairy, so we don't we don't do cheese and cream in our house. You know, we do butter. But um, 
but we don't do, you know, so we're, we already are leaning in that direction for a lot of the food that we already make. And we have been trying to eat less meat very concertedly um, environment for environmental reasons. You know, this planet needs all of us to eat less meat. So that is something that we've been working on. And yeah. um, I think we've succeeded pretty well. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of the recipes in this book are recipe are vegan or can be vegan. Oh wow! We give a lot of substitutions, uh, including vegan substitutions for most of the recipes. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and remember, you could get it at premiercollectibles.com forward slash kitchen. One thing uh, that's in all of these books is a certificate of authenticity, and the reason for that is a lot of books will be advertised as signed, but what actually happens is at the printing press, they just roll out uh, a stamp, if you will, and the author signs one time and they make copies. In this case, it's her actual signature. So we think these books are really special and they make beautiful Christmas gifts for parents, kids, anybody who needs to get up in that kitchen, right? Yeah, you know, they're also good for, if you have a kid who's um, not a kid anymore, but you know, you have your, uh, your college kid going off to college for the first time, this book is really good for them too because it's a teaching book, but it's not geared toward young kids. You know, it's not a lot of kids' cookbooks are geared toward mm. to little ones, which is great too. Yeah. But this isn't. This is really good for. So give it to your college age kid. Frankly, give it to your friend who's just started cooking because of the pandemic, and they're like, "Okay, here I am in my kitchen. And I don't know what to do." It's a. It's just a beginner's teaching book. Okay, so there's foundational it. principles in this book. For, exactly. I love that. Um, Next question is Cindy from California. Being a mom of three boys all under the age five, there are days when it's hard to find the energy to push through. What is something you do to help you push through those days? That is when I open the bottle of wine at five. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, those are, I mean, yeah. I mean, I get it. Like, I have one kid. I don't have three. You've got four. I mean, <laughs> not, and all under the age of five, okay, um, I feel like I'm not qualified to give that kind of advice, but I do, I do for me, I think that the most important things, you know, you got to find whatever your five or 10 minutes of me time is every single day, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter how crazy it is, no matter what the kids are doing. If you don't take that five or 10 minutes and do the thing that feeds your soul and makes you happy, you are not going to be a good parent. You're not going to be a, a sane person. You have to feed, you know, it's like you got to feed yourself to feed others. And I yeah. mean that, I don't mean, you know, physically, I mean, in, a, in a, a way that just feeds your soul and makes you as a human feel like yourself. You know, I also feel like as a mom, sometimes I get so involved in being a mom. I forget that I'm Melissa before, before I was mommy, I was Melissa. And sure. so that's another thing that I think is really important. So for me, that's cooking. I mean, that is my joy. So I can, you know, it's like if I can sit down with my little bowl of okra or just chopping my garlic and like having my music on, I, I center myself. But maybe if that's not, if cooking isn't your thing, whatever your thing is, own it, take it, and, and, and know that it's helping not just you, but your whole family. Yeah. So that's what I think. There, there's an ancient way of learning crafts and mastering crafts that is not only good for personal growth, but it's actually a, ends up being a meditative Zen space, like you described. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a big chef or a cook or anything, but when I actually just go in there and, you know, I actually have to check out of everything else and actually have to think, you know, how thin do I want these carrots? How much onion do I want? It actually puts your, your brain into a really special space. And I find so much joy when I do that. It's like a forced meditation. Yeah, I think that's right. You really, cause you know, especially if you're, if you're cooking something and you, you know, you want it to come out you got to focus on it. You have to engage with it or it's not going to come out well. That's, yeah. you know, I, I always say when I'm distracted, nothing I make ever works. It's like, you just have to be there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. We've had some, we've had some, <laughs> we've had some bad meals, right? Like, you know, like I'm like, Oh, did I leave? Did I forget about that? Or, you know, I just, if I, yeah. If I gathered. Yeah. So, oh, so. Oh, look, the stove is on fire. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did not, work, right? not quite, but you know, I was like, I thought I was turning the stove off and I was in such a hurry that I turned it to low. And I'm like, okay, that's been simmering now for way longer than I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we all Lisa... do it. Even me, even as a professional, even I do it. So it's okay to make mistakes also. Yes. Uh, Lisa from New York writes, what are your children's favorite dinners? I have two granddaughters, Kailani and Kaipo. And we seem to be going backward instead of forwards to try new things. I know part of it is their age, but I would greatly accept any new suggestions. 
Yeah, I mean, I remember it's like when Dahlia was really little, I don't know, with your kids too, she would eat a lot more. And then like when she hit three, she shut it down. And now at age 12, <laughs> she's finally like starting to come out again with like trying new things. But yeah, there's that like really hard middle period in there when the kids are little. Um, so look, I'm trying to think of some of her favorites that aren't like mainstream favorites. I mean, Dahlia loves salad. I do have to say, I got to give it to her. She is a big salad person. She loves a Caesar salad. Okay. Um, I, don't put, I don't put the anchovies in, but she loves to, and we have a recipe in the book, Dahlia's Caesar salad. It's got, because, you know, the thing about it is like that crunchy lettuce, if you use romaine, and then tons of Parmesan cheese and lemon and garlic and olive oil. Yeah. You know, and what's fun about it is Caesar salad is meant to be eaten with your hands. The first Caesar salad recipe. Really? Yeah. The first no Caesar way. salad recipe ever was um, the lettuce, it was, um, you know, the romaine lettuce, and it was, uh -huh. they didn't tear it up, they left it, the, the leaves whole. And oh, you right. Kind of, you kind of just picked it up and ate it with your hands, and so, um, so we do that. <laughs> and, and it's like that tactile experience, and Dolly loves it. And, you know, she's like licking her fingers and just really, so try, even if salad may not be, you know, a thing, try a Caesar salad specifically and let them eat it with their hands. That could oh, be that's something. brilliant. Yeah. It makes um, it fun like the ants on a log concept, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, an ants on a log. That's a good one. That's a, um, yeah. That, man, that never gets it, old. And also try taking um, favorites and putting twists on them. You know, kids love mac and cheese. So why don't you do like mac and cheese with something special, like mac and cheese with maybe some great, I love mac and cheese with grated carrots. It's really good. Um, you put the carrots mm, in, wow. you put in the macaroni and yeah. the orange, if you use orange cheddar, you can't really see it. You're not sneaking it in. You don't. You don't lie about it. But it's not as obvious, you know. And it's just it. It's and sweetness. Kids really like that. So that's a fun oh, thing to do. That's a great idea. Very cool. Uh, where do you get your creative bug when creating new dishes? David from Indianapolis asks. Um, God, where do I get it? Everywhere. You're just curious about everything. Yeah. I mean, for me, a lot of it is seeing a new ingredient, seeing an ingredient that I haven't seen before. I'm like, oh, you know, what do I do with um, avocado squash? Like, avocado squash is like this little, it looks like an avocado, but it's actually a squash. Like, I've never seen this before. What do I do with it? Or, you know, Con Concord grapes are just in season in New York. And I was like, let me do something new. It's always, I just always, I'm mostly inspired by the ingredients first. Like, I'll just see an ingredient mm -hmm. and think, oh, this is cool. But then sometimes I'll get inspired by like, I'll just get hungry for something. Like out of nowhere, I'll just get a craving. And, um, you know, not just for Oprah, but, you know, <laughs> and I'll think, okay, like I got to have mushrooms or something. And then I'll, I'll get a craving and then I'll find the ingredient. And um, so I'd say seasonality is important because you, you, I'm using ingredients yeah. in season. Um, my, my hunger, my mood, do I want something rich? Do I want something lighter? And, um, and also, you know, I love, I love reading other people's, I love reading other people's recipes. I love reading magazines and food, you know, food blogs and just seeing what other, everyone else is doing. Um, I, I used to be restaurants, but not so much anymore. But I used sure. to really, when I would go out to eat, I would get super inspired by chefs to see what they were doing. And yeah. then I'd say, all right, well, this is great here in this restaurant, but how do I make it easier for me to do at home? Mm. Uh, Sarah from New York writes, do you ever get super busy with life and then become hangry? <laughs> LOL. If so, what is your go-to choice for a quick and satisfying meal? Oh my God, crackers with butter. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like when I, I get in there, sometimes I'll be working, 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 and I'll forget to eat, and I'll, which is rare. I don't usually forget to eat, but sometimes I will. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm so hungry. So crackers, and we always keep our butter room temperature. We don't put it in yeah. the have, Like we always keep one thing of it out. So it's always that soft spreadable. Agree. Temperature. And Agree. Uh, like, you know, Ritz crackers or Triscuits or something with a slob of like a lot of butter. And then sometimes I'll put an anchovy on it. Or most of the time I'll just put some salt on it and just gobble it. And, or cheese. Hey, sometimes I'll put some cheese. But that you, is, that's what Yeah. I'm if you keep <laughs> a... Uh, a jar of jalapenos that are already sliced. You can you can take that uh, Ritz cracker and that butter and drop a jalapeno on top, and it is like perfection, man. Oh my right. god, amazing! That's a great idea. It's so. That's I mean, it's, it's worth keeping them just for that, just for that yeah. snack right there. Well, and I also have a jar of pickled jalapenos that I love. Oh. Sometimes I pickle my own. You know, I do like a quick pickle, which is really. Yeah. This is really. I think I have this recipe in this book actually. Okay. 
easiest quick pickle. You slice up your jalapenos, your onions, any kind of vegetable like carrots or radishes, squeeze lime juice on, a pinch of sugar and a pinch of salt, and you just let that sit for an hour and the sugar and salt dissolve. It makes a really light, limey brine. Yeah, so wow. Good. And if you use red onions and everything turns pink and it's really pretty too. Mm. Uh, and remember friends, and for those of you just tuning in, it's at premiercollectibles.com forward slash kitchen. It's a limited edition autograph copy, and I know it's so good, and I wish I already had my hands on it. Uh, let's go to uh, another Sarah from Maine. What is your favorite recipe in this book? Ooh, in the book. That's a big, mm. What is our favorite recipe in this book? I feel like our family mm, favorite. That's true. Um, oh my God. Okay. This is a really good, okay. So baked ziti. So mm. this is the best baked ziti recipe in the entire world. It just is. Can you see how delicious that looks? Whoa. There is no baked ziti, but it's super easy. Um, so I love that one. Oh, you know the cake. Okay. So you know how you always need a birthday cake, right? Like you oh. think you're a mom or yes. a dad and you need to cook, you need to make a birthday cake for your kid. For this sure. is the best birthday cake. Um, it is, it's, so uh, it's a cake with chocolate fudge frosting. Oh my goodness. Water, on it. Um, that looks so this good. Is gonna, this is going to be your go-to golden birthday cake. Um, I talked a little bit about that shrimp scampi with orzo. That is great. Oh, you know what else? We, we all love the chili. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. It's a really, like really good chili recipe. Yeah. And the vegetarian version, so there's vegetarian chili and um, chili with meat. And they're both fantastic and they're easy. And I think, frankly, chili is a great thing for a kid to make because it's so forgiving. Like you can mess up a million times and still sure. it because it's chili. Sure. Uh, Frank from Idaho asks, what is your absolute favorite dessert to make? Um, well, I was talking about the shortbread cookies. I love to make the shortbread cookies. If I want to, if I want to make something a little bit fancier though, um, I mean, a cake is always like, you know, a gingerbread cake. I love a gingerbread yeah. cake. Like, yeah. You can make them without a mixer. We have a great one in this book. It's gingerbread with um, a, a citrus lemony on the front, like a glaze on it. Yeah, and it's like really molassesy, and it la it keeps for days if you don't finish it. It's just a great thing to have on hand, and it's also you know festive enough because it has the blaze on it. You can serve it to company. It's it's like a perfect cake. Mm. Cynthia from Rome asked a question. I was going to ask you best oatmeal recipe, please. I love breakfast. Me too, Cynthia. Okay, okay, I have the best oatmeal recipe. All right, so um, and so wait, Danny, are you an oatmeal guy? Oh yeah, we ca okay. I call it my sweatpants oatmeal. Oh yeah. But just because it's like, yeah, it's your like go to, like no effort, get it yep. done. You're you gotta eat now. Yeah. Yeah, well Daniel's also an oatmeal guy. Like, yeah, definitely. And we like do you like um regular oats? We like Irish oats, you know, like those steel cut oats. I like the ones that melt and get really creamy easier. The the quick I don't know, quick oats, I guess you call them. They're just cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. The quick cooking ones because those, you know, the thing about quick cooking oats is that they're rolled super thin. So oh, that they yeah. cook really quick. But the steel cut oats is when they're they're cut into chunks. Oats themselves are cut into little chunks. So yeah. you get, I like that nebby kind of texture. Yeah. And um, in this book, we have a great oatmeal recipe. It's over, it's like um, foolproof oven baked oats. And it's great because oh, you wow. take your oats, you first of all, you, you toast them in a little bit of butter, which is always good because butter, right? So you toast your oats in butter and then- In, you in a thin them. pan in the oven? And yeah, exactly. Right in the oven, throw it in there. And okay. then you can go do your thing and you, you can't mess it up. And then they're ready when you're ready. And then we put a brown sugar glaze right on top. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, really, really good. Have you ever put uh, fruit in your oatmeal? You don't like fruit in your oatmeal. Not generally. No. Um, I, you know, I think I don't like fruits. And I like yeah. raisins. Yeah. I don't like, like big chunks of, oh, you know what's good, actually? Have you ever grated apple into it and let it cook? That's good. I guess I like cooked fruit. Oh, it's yeah. Not what, why, what do you do, Danny? Do you, are you? Yeah, you so, yeah, so I'll sprinkle blueberries in it. And when I was a kid, there was this oatmeal. I think it was called, like, it, it was just, oh, I shouldn't say it's junk. I don't want to slander any brands. But it was this stuff you put in your bowl, you heat it up, and then it had this gel, it's this jelly base that you swirl onto the top of it. And it was this very, like, 
an, an interesting combination that just was addictive almost. I remember as a kid, well, fast forward as an adult and I started kind of reclaiming my health and how I ate and being more conscious. And I threw some blueberries in my oatmeal on a whim once and it was that com that special combination. For me, it brought me back to that childhood you know, chemical laden, <laughs> but it was actually the pure form, right? It was, it was yeah. as it was intended. And so I thought, man, I feel like I'm onto some sort of combination here, but maybe it's not for everyone. Yeah. You know, actually I should try that. that I, sounds I, good. It does sound really, really good. Yeah. Um, but you love that though. When you can like, you know, you have like a childhood thing and you know, it's junk, but it's like, yeah. you love it because it's your childhood flavor, right? right. And then you can reinvent it as a grown up, a little more healthy. Absolutely. That's such a great yeah. thing. All right, uh, Chris from Ontario, what do you eat for your birthday dinner? Those Canadians. What do I eat for, oh, you're gonna get me some more. We're keeping sounding here. Uh, for my birthday dinner, um, what do I eat? Not Oprah, although I love Oprah, but um, what do I eat for my Maybe you have a favorite, what's your, do you have a favorite all time? You know, can we talk about what I eat for my birthday brunch? Because really the way I celebrate <laughs> yeah, okay. my birthday is we have brunch. Like, yes, yeah, so we can. And my birthday brunch is bagels and lox. I oh. love bagels and lox. Oh, you're I mean, a real New Yorker then. I That's am a real you just New proved it. <laughs> yep, I'm a Brooklyn girl through and through. Grew up here, and um, every year for my birthday, the way we celebrate is we have friends over. Except not this year. We just did it with us, um, and we get bagels and lox, and we just get a beautiful spread um, and with white fish salad. And sometimes I'll make coffee cake with that. Um, and it's just really, it's really lovely. I, I don't even know what we have for dinner. Like, what do I even do for birthday dinner? I, I'll drink, we'll drink like good wine. Maybe I'll have, I know it's a good one. I don't know. We had something good. There's yeah, usually something good, but it's not always the same thing. Yeah, it changes a lot. But the, the thing that I do, my birthday tradition is bagels and lox for brunch. Beautiful. Uh, John from Virginia asks, at what age did you discover the passion for cooking? So I was about eight years old and I, I had a big sweet tooth and my parents were kind of like, well, they were great home cooks, but they were also a little bit like on the healthier side. Like my mom would try to give me a rice cake with like butter and sugar on it and tell me that was dessert. And you're like, yeah, this is not dessert. Um, <laughs> but they were, they respected, they didn't want to buy cookies or buy cake, but if I would make it, I was allowed to have it. So that really okay. spurred me on. Wow. To to bake. I was like, oh, you mean if I make it, I can have it. And plus, you know, the thing about it, when you're baking with kids, anything that you bake, and I think this is what they were thinking, and as a parent, I, I see it now, when you make something yourself, it doesn't have all that junk in it. You know, it, it's right. much better for you. It's not right. processed. You can control the amount of sugar and salt, and there's nothing fake in there. So it's much healthier. So having a brownie that you make yourself, I mean, look, it's still a brownie, but at least it's not a brownie with tons of artificial crap in it. So um, yeah. that's what really started me on cooking. Wow. And that's such a, a good point. You know, half the battle is just making your own food, right? Yeah. To, to eating healthy, you know, it's, you, you can micro, then you could go deeper and micromanage every ingredient you put in and, and fine. But I, I think uh, we probably get 80% there by just cooking ourselves, right? It's absolutely. Especially when it comes to things like sodium intake, you know, a lot of yeah. people have to watch their, most of that is from processed food. It's not from yeah. the salt that you can make you don't have to not put salt in your food if you're watching your sodium. You just have to stop eating the processed food. Um, mm. So this is something that I think if people would just make, if they would cook two extra meals a week rather than order and take, take out or, or you know, defrost something frozen, it'd be so much ahead of the game. Cool. All right, Melissa, would love to ask you 22 questions in two minutes. And oh, my gosh. Are you ready for this? Okay. Both of you can feel free to chime in. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, where were you born? Brooklyn. Who would you want to play you in a movie? I've already got the person, but I'll see what you say. Well, I, had, I have a new person, um, Anya Taylor-Joy, right? <laughs> All right, well, I was going to say- she was, in, she was in The Queen's Gambit, which you just saw me love, and she's gorgeous, and you know, she has red hair. Oh, I can't wait to watch that, by the way. Um, Tina Fey was going to be my- Oh, that, that would work. I'd be happy yeah. with Tina Fey. Yeah, back to 30 Rock. I mean, like, if, you, if I was watching 30 Rock, and I was on, and then I got into episode three, and instead of her flying around the corner, you did. I'd never, I wouldn't know it for a good two minutes. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, you could be her stunt double. Uh, who makes you laugh the most? She does. Yeah. What I is your? I know you're a mother, so I'm not going to ask your biggest fear. What's your second biggest fear? 
My second biggest fear, um, environmental apocalypse, basically. Just, you know, we're going to ruin this planet and it makes me crazy. So doing everything I can to keep it, keep it. And also I don't like snakes. Oh, ever since Indiana Jones, I've not liked snakes. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> what is the one thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? Butter. Yeah. What is your greatest accomplishment? Um, my family. Who is the most interesting person you met recently? Oh, God, most interesting person I met recently? Who have I met who's new? I don't meet anybody at new anymore because we're all... Simon we're, Sharma. We're in Zoom. Um, yeah, I've been emailing with... Um, can, I, can I do an email relationship? Simon yeah. Sharma is a professor um, at Columbia. He's um, written about um, art history. He's written about... Um, uh, all kinds of things. Anyway, and um, I, he's, so we have an email thing. So now I'm, he, so Simon Chong, <laughs> most yeah. interesting new person in my life. I mean, it's 2020. Isn't that the way we meet everyone now, right? Zoom right. or email? Yep. What is your middle name? And no E. It's my wife's middle name. What is your biggest pet peeve? When people use the honey and don't wipe the jar. Oh, <laughs> so good. I hate that. It's like sticking <laughs> with the honey. No matter, even if you think you didn't spill honey on the outside of the jar, you oh, did. You, you did. did. If you yeah, used it. No, if you used it, you spilled it. Totally. Yeah, we actually have a policy. Whenever you touch the honey jar, it gets ran under, closed and ran under warm water. 100%. Right? It's, not, it's so easy to do. It's so yeah. simple. Uh, what's the last book you read? Um, it's called Hamnet and it's by Maggie O'Farrell. And so Hamnet is the same name as Hamlet. And it's a, it's a fictionalized story about the death of Shakespeare's son. It's really Whoa. moving, really beautiful. Whoa. What is your favorite hobby? Um, hobby? <laughs> Cooking? <laughs> wait, oh wait, that's my job. Um, I don't think I have it. Puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. Okay. okay. Puzzles? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll find one corner piece on a puzzle and then I'll flip the table and go find something to do. Uh, <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure? Um, I don't think any guilty pleasure food-wise or guilty pleasure not food-wise. That's your call. Oh, that's good. Because I feel like there's no such thing as guilt associated with food. Love like that. Cheetos. Oh, Cheetos. Yeah, no, Daniel's right. Cheetos. Cheetos. I love Cheetos. Extra crunchy. <laughs> do you have any hidden talents? No, not, nothing's hidden. Everything is, every, you, you get what you see, man. <laughs> You're not going to break a flute out from under the table or anything right now? She draws a really good cat. Oh, I'm going to draw some here. Yeah. I can draw, I can draw a good cat. Do I have any talents or not? Yeah, cat drawing. All right, yeah, but you, don't I, play, you don't secretly play a kazoo or a French horn or anything? Um, no, and I'm terrible at singing. Um, nice singing. No, yeah, no, no, actually, no, I don't think I have any hidden. I think all my talents are on display. What color is your toothbrush? White. Uh, where can people go to buy your limited edition autographed cookbook? Uh -huh. <laughs> go to, is it premiersigning.com? What's the, what's Premiercollectibles.com forward slash Thank kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> Premier Collectibles. I'm looking right at it. Premier Collectibles. <laughs> that was intended to throw you off. What is your secret snack? My secret snack that's not Cheetos. I already um, know butter with, we already said it, crackers and butter, right? Oh, here's another one. Um, cottage cheese with chili sauce. Oh my goodness. That's a good one. I love that. Yep. How do you take your coffee? Um, I drink tea. Me too. What is the last movie you saw in theaters? In theaters? Do you even remember theaters? Theaters? Oh, <laughs> you remember <geez>. those? <laughs> and people, remember those? God, I, I seriously <laughs> don't. I actually don't remember the last. I mean, it's no, been it's a been a, it's been like since last February. By the time because we didn't go to any movies in March and we locked down right after. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I, I can tell you the last movie that we watched. Um, the last movie we watched upstairs in our home, you know, uh, on on our TV was um, an Alma Dovar movie, um, w Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. Hilarious movie from the eighties. Wow. What's the last gift you gave? Um, the last gift I gave, um, we, okay, you know what? We went over to an outdoor dinner at a friend's house over the weekend, and we gave them um, one Daniel bakes bread, and he makes this amazing sourdough bread, so we gave them a loaf of, the, of Daniel's sourdough bread. Hmm. 
What cause is dear to your heart? Feeding people childhood, that is, um, that is probably other, you know, the environment also, I guess, as I've been talking about, but also childhood, child hunger. There's no reason for children to be hungry in this country, but they are. And there are so many ways. I believe in helping in a very local way. There's a soup kitchen near our house um, called Chips. Um, and we're, um, we try to be active there, but any way that you can find um, hungry children in your community and help them. There's so many people hungry right now and there are food pantries that need your help. So that would be, that would be it. What is number one on your bucket list? To get back to, to get back on an airplane and go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> she says through tears. Where do you want to go that you've never been? Good follow-up question. Yeah, that is a good, that's a great follow-up question. Um, <laughs> Vietnam, I really want to go to Vietnam. That's like big on our, that's big on my list. Um, and um, that I've never been. So yeah, I guess Vietnam is the, is the number one place. Right now, and right that's now. all the time we have with Melissa and her awesome husband, Daniel. To order her limited edition autograph book, go to premiercollectibles.com forward slash kitchen. And to be a part of the live signing experience with more of your favorite authors, follow Premier Collectibles on Instagram or Facebook. And Clark family, from all of your friends who have tuned in and from all of us at Premier Collectibles, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Danny. Great chatting with you. Bye, everybody. Thanks for Great tuning in. Yeah, bye everybody. Bye now. Hi. I am sitting here with the one and only Jackie Chan, global superstar, and he is signing all of these books. Are your hands tired? Uh, no, tired, but I'm happy. All right. Yeah, I'm really, so really happy. happy. To hear that. How do you feel? Good. I'm excited. This is the first time I've done something like this before a live signing. Where do I want to go that I've never been? Um, oh, we're thinking about, uh, not thinking, we're putting it in motion. I'm going to go to Indonesia on uh, my Irresponsible Tour this year. I'm excited about that. I've never been. And uh, there's been a heavy demand for me there. So we're going to go. We're going to go to Indonesia and I'm going to make people laugh in Indonesia. That's how I roll. <laughs> how do you roll? <laughs> I can't make this up. Wayne, you got your Indonesia pants. I decided it uh, about a good three weeks ago. You'll see it on the schedule soon, so I suggest you go get your pants for Indonesia, because you're not going to wear them stupid pants. Where do you think Indonesia is? India. Yes, we out. You can see that I'm signing it. This is not some machine scribbling my name. This is my actual human body scribbling my name so all right there we go first book sign biggest pet peeve yeah. um men that talk to me with spinach in their teeth what can i do while at work to help lower my stress and improve my health one musician do you most admire i love you all and we'll talk again soon take care bye much love see you see you soon everybody bye bye, bye. bye. we'll see you around the world Woo! have a great day Thank you, everyone here. Bye, guys. Say goodbye, Mary. See you in the morning. <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm going to go get drunk.